you and if he had paid protection money that might well have involved inviting in the drug dealers so either way the landlord was on a loser we live in hell to be quite honest yeah we live in in hell like, you don't actually going to wake up to a pub or a cinder it's a, it's a frightening situation to be in <laughs> Peter Charleston has been running into racketeers for years, an experience shared with many of his colleagues in Britain's 65,000 pubs. Within a five minute car drive, uh, I can show you quite a number of pubs that are now boarded up. Um, the landlords uh, have been forced to leave because of threats of violence, if not to himself, his children or his wife. They've been frightened to death. They've had to leave the businesses, the homes, the livelihoods, and they've gone. I'm trying to go up to land's end, it's the same. You get a, a gang of men together, and they can control things. Gaff, I need to like, go to such a place, cause a bit of rumpus. So we used to do that. If people was there that got involved, then tools was used. Knives, machetes. Sometimes you're going to be pulled out. Pull much had two aims. Both Racketeering is spreading rapidly, with police nationwide targeting gangs who've taken over pubs. A Northumbrian task force prepares to arrest members of a local protection gang. Earlier this year, this area, that's Wool's End, and Gateshead East in particular, was targeted by known criminals for means of protection and for drug dealing. We're aware that people we're dealing with have got convictions for violence. They have used violence in the past. They do carry weapons. And those weapons, as you're well aware, can be guns, knives. We've obviously got to bear that in mind. Speed is of the essence, as you know, in any way of this type. One AM and the task force faces its first problem. The still crowded pub is so well fortified, it'll take them almost 10 minutes just to break in. The size of the problem is massive. It's difficult to quantify it because there's so much fear out there as a result of the intimidation. But we know from our contacts in pubs and clubs that this problem is massive and it's growing. So we decided to go into the pub trade ourselves to bring you a picture of two weeks in the life of one of the country's most difficult pubs. The staff of life in Salford has been a constant target for villains who've driven out five landlords in the past year. Paul Beardsell has painful memories of his time at the pub. He lasted only five weeks. The trouble started as soon as he opened the doors. The problems which arose within the first couple of days, you know, these lads were coming in, serving themselves, refusing to pay, and basically just wanted to run the pub. Um, I tried to stand up to them, but as it happened, you know, I came unstuck with it all. The staff of life has had uh, five licensees in the past year. The first licensee, who had been with us for six to seven years, uh, was regularly intimidated, both himself and his family. He had been beaten up. Uh, in, in the end, he pulled out after six years or so. Uh, we then had a relief manager who was in there for a very short period of time. Uh, he was very frightened and left after a couple of months. We then had an incident with the next manager where there was a break-in. Uh, the manager was caught. He was forced to open the safe. £1,800 was stolen, and he was uh, then tied up and beaten with a crowbar. Then he hit me over the back of the head with a crowbar and then just absolutely kicked shit out of me. I came back up here, they came back up here and shut the door and left me in there. It took me three hours to get round here to the phone, which I pulled off of me in the teeth and ended up here just shaking and raging. The boards come off as the cook report moves in, but we won't be putting our names above the door and for once the villains will be welcome. The previous landlord had lasted only four days. Punches were thrown, bottles, we were bombarded, the bar stuff were bombarded with tins, bottles, chairs, tables, the windows were smashed, they run it onto the car park, uh, smashing cars up, and tot then totally 
throwing things through the windows from outside, they actually wreck the pub. The staff's downfall is all too typical of many pubs throughout the country. It was once a popular place with the locals, until gangs of criminals moved in, demanding protection money. It wasn't me running the pub, they were trying to run the pub. It was very, very, very difficult to keep on top of it. It made me physically and mentally sick in such a way that after 31 years in the job, I thought it's time to get out. We have a problem with certainly some of our clubs and of late some of our pubs, where the licensees are being visited by known villains who are extorting money out of them, becomes sort of like an insidious cancer. It starts to grow. It carries on on a tide of fear. It's not just a problem for the landlord, it's a problem for the breweries as well. Recruitment is one of the most difficult problems in this area of Manchester. And you have to be honest with applicants and tell them the extent of the problems. Uh, but what licensee is going to want to take on that sort of challenge, in particular if he's got a family? We installed seven hidden cameras and microphones in the staff and our own manager, a veteran of the licensed trade. I've, I've run some tough pubs in my time, uh, one of them extremely tough, uh, but this is certainly going to take uh, top position on rough pubs. It's, uh, it's, uh, yes, I feel it's going to be a dangerous situation. As we prepared for the big opening, neighbouring landlords warned us of what to expect. The Langworthy is now closed down and boarded up. Chris Flannery was intimidated and firebombed out of business. I came downstairs about half past seven in the evening. There's two guys at the bar messing around with the uh, pumps. And one of the bar staff asked me to intervene, which I did. As I'm talking to the first shop in front, the second one pulls a revolver out on me, sticks it in my stomach, and basically tells me that uh, they don't give him what he wants. That's the end of it. Which was under pound a week plus uh, three beer. And it seems that in our new line of work, it's not just our profits or our property that'll be in danger. About six death threats I got altogether, which was enough for me. I thought the job's not worth it. Out we go. Now, how were those death threats delivered? Through the window, actually, on uh, the good old way, the bricks with the message tied to it. Pool balls, bricks. I had a message written over my name over the, over the pub. Get out, I'll be, I'll be shot. Last week, relief landlady Gail Tyndall became yet another victim when she came face to face with a gang of armed men. The five have come in through that sickle door there. They said every day on the floor. And just directed me to where they wanted me to go to give them the woman. Which obviously I did with the gun from the head. That is exactly what happened. They took all the money, bit the telephone wires out, and locked them down in the cellar. I mean, this pub down there, literally getting a petrol bomb burnt down. Licensees are paying four or five hundred pounds. So there's no trouble in the pub, and the pub's still standing, and it's not getting petrol bombed, and all this, that, and the other. That's the price you've got to pay. Everything's going to plan at our pub, but then again, previous opening nights have had a habit of going wrong. One of the customers in the pub takes this in. He says, you'll need this to protect yourself. Now, that is an illegal weapon, but when he showed me that and then run off because the pub was shut, he was striking to death. Our big opening began with a bang. We'd see more fireworks later, but of a rather different kind. It would turn out to be a great start to the evening with a packed house to greet the new landlord. It was only when we'd called time that, as expected, things started to go wrong. Our hidden cameras catch two men starting a planned fight in the top left-hand corner of the picture. Customers run for the door as the fracas spills into the lower lounge covered by a black and white camera. Towards the end of the evening, there was some basically mindless violence. Um, I've, I've run some pubs in my time, 
um, related problems like drugs and violence. But this was obviously...